it's been a number of weeks since we've had the last uh, in the mail video but same as always shopping on aliexpress continued nevertheless so here are my latest findings uh, presented in this video i'm going to start with this voltme dual usb type c uh, phone charger so recently i've upgraded my uh, phone and watch and i'm charging them with the original wireless chargers uh, which both have USB Type-C on the adapter end. And I was not particularly interested in the output power uh, because I charge at night and uh, it doesn't really bother me if I'm not reaching the full power of the charger, but I wanted the charger to be as small as possible to make it easy to carry during travels as well. So I came across this uh, brand and this uh, particular uh, model. This is the VoltMe brand and this is a uh, 30 watts maximum power dual um, USB type C charger. Now this is supposedly based on GAN transistors which uh, would explain the very small package for the given power. I mean it, it's really small and it's just half of its size is just a socket, the European socket. It will of course be much smaller for the US uh, socket. Uh, and it, it's incredible i really like how small it is and it's exactly what i need in terms of power as well i haven't heard of this uh, brand before uh, but they do claim they're an oem for these chargers so presumably you'll see stuff like this under different brandings maybe who knows maybe even as a baseus charger and i've got two of them uh, one i have been uh, using and testing for the past couple of months and I am really happy um, with the performance. And for my personal use, this charger is just perfect. And my watch needs uh, 5 volts, 5 watts, I believe, while my iPhone needs 15 watts, uh, which is likely not getting it while charging at the same time with the watch. Uh, but like I said, not needed uh, in my case because of the long hours uh, during night charging. So a bit of clarification because uh, I've mentioned, you know, my watch takes 5 watts, my phone takes 15 watts, so that's 20 watts, much less than this can provide. But uh, even though this is rated for 30 watts, it can only do that um, once uh, if if only one of the USB uh, ports is used so that it can uh, negotiate to a power delivery voltage like 15 or 20 volts to deliver all that power. But since I'm also plugging in a second device which uh, negotiates down to 5 volts, which is my watch. Now both ports will stay at 5 volts because there is a single regulator in here. So it's going to be limiting the total output to 3 amps, I believe. Uh, let me see if the, let me see. Yeah. So at 5 volts, uh, you only get uh, 3 amps. So that's only uh, 15 watts total. And it makes sense. The charger is so small, they probably don't have the space to put the dual output converter in here. Uh, the logo also lights up and I'll put a picture of that on screen. It can be a problem like it was in my case because I'm running it right on my nightstand socket. So it was kind of disturbing me during nighttime, but I masked it with uh, some black tape so it was uh, easy to uh, fix. Uh, these are not cheap chargers by my standard, uh, but they're certainly worth it. They feel like super top quality chargers and uh, they match my requirements of a compact charger. So check them out. A link will be in the description below. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. From two layers to advanced multi-layer flex rigid PCBs, PCBWay will have you covered. You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining, and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website linked below. Next up, I have a couple of uh, EVA hard shell cases and uh, this small one is intended to be used for my TS100 or my TS80 soldering iron uh, because it's nice to have, you know, the tool plus maybe a little bit of solder and the USB cable to be carried inside the case like this just to keep everything nice and tidy and ready to be put in a toolbox or a backpack for that remote soldering job. And this particular size seem to, seems to fit the soldering irons uh, just nice. So it's definitely a good purchase if you have the TS100 or TS80 soldering iron or anything which is uh, of similar size. This uh, bigger EVA carry case is for my uh, Mixig portable oscilloscope. So this is the um, STO-1004 uh, which I reviewed in Volvo 438. 
and I will link that video on screen if you'd like to check it out. Unfortunately, this scope does not come with a carry case, which is unfortunate. And uh, if you think about it, whoever will be using this scope as a portable unit will for sure require a carry case. So I looked around for something that would fit the scope and provide a decent level of uh, protection. I don't want to go crazy, you know, Pelican style uh, protection, just, just some general purpose carry handle and scratch and dust protection type of case. So I found this one on uh, AliExpress and dimensions were a bit tight even from the listing uh, but the next available sizes were just too big so I decided to give this one a, a try and as we'll notice here it's a very tight fit it my scope barely fits uh, in here uh, so it would probably bother you because it, it, it does not easily slide uh, in and out of the case uh, so it takes a bit of effort to get it back out but if you only need uh, to use this portable scope occasionally like i i would do it uh, it will get the job done it also comes with this uh, kind of uh, laser uh, sliced uh, protection foam that you can fill the voids inside the enclosure but for the oscilloscope itself this won't help you because we are occupying everything in the horizontal uh, plane so uh, just maybe another uh, general purpose uh, piece of foam would do the job better at uh, filling the uh, uh, vertical space or maybe you know just uh, placing the probes in here would just fill the space uh, and you don't need anything extra ultimately the case does the job although it's not a perfect fit it's worth considering next up i got myself one of these uh, small photography uh, video rgb led light and this is from a company called uh, ulanzi and um, the model number is vl49 now if you see the screen flickering right now that's due to the settings i have on my camera in terms of uh, exposure and which one of the cameras the the phone is using um, you can shoot video without this uh, flickering however Here's for example, uh, I've just changed the exposure settings and now the image is not flickering anymore. I really like the specs on this uh, compact unit. Um, first, I like how small this is. It's a perfect form factor for me. It has the uh, tripod screw mount, uh, but it also has um, uh, these um, uh, hot shoe mount uh, plus a magnetic back. So you can easily um, like pair multiple of these and, and connect them and just attach it magnetically to a metal surface so many mounting options uh, it's got a usb type c plus an internal uh, single cell 2000 milliamp hour batteries which gives it a claim battery life of up to 10 hours uh, that would of course be dependent on the brightness and output color level i also like the uh, small control panel on the back with the small oled screen so you can adjust the rgb color in degrees kelvin and also the the brightness uh, this has uh, 60 LEDs inside, which I consider a lot for such a small area. And this, of course, gives a very even output. Uh, the LEDs are rated for high CRI of 95+, plus, about 800 lux output at half a meter. So these are all pretty impressive specs for such a compact uh, unit. Definitely up to the job of the average uh, hobbyist like myself. You can easily imagine how you could use something like this to enhance the maybe the background of your uh, video or photography scene. You can light up the subject or just for general purpose work around the lab. Uh, it would probably be overkill for that purpose though. Build quality seems really nice, like really nice plastic and finish on this. The light output also seems like a high quality light, but I'm not a professional photographer, so what do I know? Same as always, there will be links for this product in the description below. Next up, I got one of these uh, smart learning RF remote controls that comes in uh, multiple color options. And um, I previously had other models uh, also ordered from AliExpress. Those were either 433 MHz, maybe covering the 350 MHz, or either 868 MHz, maybe covering the 900 MHz. Now, this one claims that it can do wider frequency range, 280 MHz up to 870 MHz, rolling code option and auto scan functionality. They also claim FCC on the box, which I highly doubt. Uh, nonetheless, I ordered one so we can check it out. Now, the outside feels like it's this uh, rather nice soft plastic, so it's really nice remote control. Uh, but let's take the screws out and check out the hardware inside. Yeah, so this uh, is a really nice PCB inside of here, really uh, uh, clean assembly job. And the hardware in here 
explains the capability of this remote and the wider frequency range that it can cover and um, uh, although it claims that it can only go up to 868 megahertz uh, technically this hardware is also capable of 915 megahertz uh, so I'm not sure why they haven't claimed that as well um, now th th this is based on a chip from Texas Instruments is the CC11OL um, that you see here so uh, I'll link a data sheet on screen of this uh, chip it's really capable of all of those frequencies and different modulation techniques and it's controlled by this other chip in here which is like a uh, uh, microcontroller, um, Chinese supplied microcontroller and it's funny how they even have two footprints it's like they, they have this microcontroller here but they also have a footprint here so they, maybe they provisioned for you know not, not being able to get this microcontroller and they have a different footprint for an alternative in there so yeah the hardware is really capable on this remote I'm not sure how uh, capable the firmware it is but just Considering the RF chip, yep, it's capable of all of those uh, frequencies depending on how you program it. Next up, a very simple, cheap, yet effective product. I needed a bunch of uh, key rings recently and I just didn't have a bunch of the same stuff. Um, so I went on AliExpress and found these, which are rather nice, slim type. So I got a set of these for general purpose uh, key ring usage. And I also ordered a fancier one, which is made of titanium. Now, unfortunately, I don't like this one uh, when compared to this, just because the, the keys cannot easily fold on, uh, on over this one, and it just, just makes them uh, more bulky and they occup occupy more space in my pocket, which I don't like. But these uh, simple ones work great, and if you're the type that just has lots of keys, then maybe the titanium one would also work nicely for you. Next up, I have a rather boring product. It's a typical USB to type A to USB type C cable um, with average quality, not even flexible enough, not even braided like the ones that I like and use from Baseus. But this one has a right angle connector uh, in here uh, on the type C connector, which is a pretty rare find. Uh, at some point uh, I had a situation where I could use something like this for a cleaner cable management and I was surprised how expensive and how rare these are versus the regular good quality standard orientation cables. So if you happen to be looking for something like this, um, a link will be provided in the description below. And I have yet another USB cable and this one is a USB type B. So the printer type USB uh, port on one end with USB type C on the other end. And you know how most uh, modern laptops these days only have a USB type C port or limited number uh, of USB type A's, like maybe just one. So if you wanted to plug in, let's say a printer in a modern laptop, it's a pain. Or if you're doing, you know, firmware development and you want to plug in like an ARM debugger programmer, uh, those typically also use uh, USB type B so you'll most likely need some kind of adapter to do it um, which most of the times maybe you don't have it with you uh, so I've started stocking on these cables in different lengths in my box of cables and so far I've used three of them uh, so three different friends all had this issue with the printer they all called me knowing that I'm usually the handy guy having a bunch of different types of cables and I always uh, solve the day with one of these and if you like your printers to be wired like I do instead of wireless and you're using more modern devices with USB type C ports sooner or later you're going to find one of these very handy so a link to these will be in the description below and while we are here in the USB cable category I might as well show this one which is a USB type C to USB type C cable in bright red and this is like extremely soft and, and flexible uh, silicone insulation feels like super high quality and this particular model is sold and branded by a company called uh, Pine64 uh, which makes a portable soldering iron hence why we have the silicone insulation to protect the wire from being melted with the soldering iron. It's got power and data but it's likely just the standard USB 2.0 data pair inside here and in terms of power I would expect this to have some very decent copper inside since it's intended to be used with their soldering iron that can do 65 watts on USB type C power delivery so I'll probably pack this with my um, portable soldering iron EVA carry case which I've shown earlier next up I've got some of this uh, fiberglass high temperature uh, cable installation 
This is a one meter long, three millimeter diameter, but of course you can order this in different uh, sizes, uh, black or white. This one in particular is rated for 400 degrees Celsius continuous usage and 600 degrees peak temperatures according to the AliExpress listing. But of course I would take these ratings with an increased safety margin given that they do not come from a known vendor with a data sheet. They claim the tube is woven from alkali-free glass fiber yarn and treated with a small amount of silane, silane adhesive. I don't even know how to pronounce this. So definitely not an expert on these kinds of things, but I reckon it's going to do the job just fine for a hobby project that has some wiring around and a hot plate uh, or a reflow oven that only goes to about 300 degrees maximum. And I'm going to finish this uh, cabling uh, category with some uh, cable management uh, band. I got two of these rolls and I don't have a favorite brand for these. I just get whatever is the cheapest at that time. And when I run out, I just order another couple of rolls. Don't be lazy. Do your cable management. Have it looking nice when your tech friends uh, come over to visit you. Next up, I have a hidden GPS tracking device inside this automotive relay enclosure. And this must be one of my popular videos of the channel. It's Vlog 272, which has over 200k views. Yeah, that's the YouTube algorithm at work. It's not the videos where you spend the most time preparing them, doing experiments, collecting data, building hardware, teaching other people how to build stuff. Nope, it's a video where you show a GPS tracker hidden inside this relay enclosure from AliExpress. But I don't want to keep ranting about that topic, so let's continue. In that video, I showed model number CJ720, and many people expressed the concern that it only supported the uh, 2G networks, which are slowly being phased out in many countries. Well, it took them a while, but they finally released an upgraded model. Uh, this is the CJ730 Plus, and this one is supposed to support 4G. It even says here on, on the box. And um, I believe there is also a, an upgrade now supporting three constellations, GPS, GLONASS and BDS and firmware upgrading over the air, although I wouldn't count on that happening uh, with this being the same as before controlled via some Chinese cloud server. Now, this was a lot more expensive than the original 2G relay, but if you need it, you need it. Now, because this is uh, controlled by that Chinese cloud server, I also did another video, Vlog 274, where I showed you how you can install your own GPS tracking server, and if that better suits your needs, I won't go into any details on how to install or configure this, uh, but uh, you can uh, have a look at that video. Now I'll just uh, quickly uh, remove the cover to show you how it looks on the inside. So it seems like the build quality improved a little bit inside the relay. Of course, we can't see much because of this box construction and well, the way the different PCBs are soldered together, uh, but it just seems like a cleaner uh, build quality inside. Now, if you're interested in me doing a separate video on how to set this up, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll do it. Next, I have a USB to a CAN adapter. And for those of you interested in hacking or general uh, work concerning a CAN interface, uh, they claim this one is an upgraded version based on an STM32F072. I'm not sure if that's an, any advantage to the user. Maybe they just upgraded because they couldn't find the original controller. Uh, it may have been an STM31F103 originally. Uh, but what I like is that this one has a USB Type-C port, which is uh, convenient. And it also has these um, screw plug-in terminals for the CAN interface. Again, convenient. The device is still only compatible with, with CAN 2.0a and b. Still no CAN FD support for these uh, cheap AliExpress interfaces. And generally, these interfaces are compatible with all software that runs on uh, Linux because they generally create a socket CAN interface. So it should be fairly easy to, you know, set up such an interface and and connect to it like. With a um, with software like uh, Can Able or Candlelight or Clipper for 3D printers. Next up, I have a very simple BNC T split connector, and as you can see, I have the female end uh, on this side and the two male ends. Now, this would allow me to connect it to the oscilloscope input while running the signal into one of the ports uh, with a BNC cable, for example, and attaching a 50 ohm termination to the other end. Because my Rigel DS1054Z is an older basic model, it does not support the 50 ohm termination at the input, 
built into the scope so if you plan to do some measurements where you want to maintain the same impedance across your transmission line then this simple device can help with that and a link to this will be provided in the description below next up i have a few interesting ceramic heating plates so these come in a, in a different in a few different uh, internal uh, resistance values and i ordered a few variations like 2 5 and 10 ohms and the size of these is 15 by 70 millimeter but you can also find them in uh, other sizes and they are rated for up to 500 degrees celsius uh, the seller on AliExpress also claims that any voltage up to 100 volts is fine to run on these. Again, without a data sheet, we do not know if 100 volts is close to a breakdown voltage due to separation distances used inside, um, or maybe it can also handle 240 volts. We do not have that certainty. They also mentioned some example calculations of 220 volts in the product description, but it's not clear to me whether or not it is safe to power these off mains. I don't have anything specific in mind for these, but some general ideas could include a small soldering hot plate with a PID controller, or how about maintaining the temperature inside an electronics box in harsh weather. I'm sure there could be many other applications which I invite my viewers to suggest in the comments below. Next up I have a uh, radar sensor uh, module from Hylink, and this is the LD2410C. And this is very similar to the LD2410B, which everyone must know by now. And in fact, it is using exactly the same radar chip, same firmware, just a different uh, form factor. So whichever application you have running for the previous sensor, you can use this one as a drop-in replacement. And although I haven't published anything on the subject, I have been experimenting in the background with integrating these radar sensors in my home automation setup. The results are really good. This one, for example, provides you with a number of different distance-based detection zones or segments, and you can set individual sensitivity thresholds for each of those segments, which is pretty useful because you could have different detection settings for different distances to the sensor. And uh, it's, it's not quite the best you can get right now, as there are you know, sensors that run at 60 gigahertz from the likes of Infineon or Texas Instruments while this uh, Chinese sourced uh, radar chip only runs at 24 GHz but uh, this one is much more user friendly because you don't have to mess with the radar detection algorithm that's built in you just get a basic UART interface that outputs the uh, detection values and the last item in today's mailbag is this uh, SHT30 temperature and humidity sensor that comes in this uh, waterproof package intended to be used for outdoor sensing now the aliexpress listing claims the operating range of this uh, package to be minus 40 degrees celsius to 125 degrees celsius with a uh, zero to 100 percent relative humidity but i'm not really sure they test these to match that operating range or um, if they just generally coat this uh, spec on all of their uh, sensor packages so myself i've been using like a cheap indoor zigbee temperature and humidity sensor which i've placed outdoor to sense the temperature and humidity outside it's been working fine from early spring to late autumn but during the low temperatures in the middle of the winter like below zero degrees celsius the battery likely can't keep up so it dies and i only get an update every few days like when the temperature of the battery goes above zero for a few hours during the day so i've been meaning to replace it with something like this and run a wire to power the sensor and read it with an esp32 and this should fix the issue and it should allow it to run even in the coldest nights reporting temperatures as often as i need it now sure running a cable uh, to the outside is not as convenient as having something wireless but I only have to do it uh, once and then it should be very reliable. I think I should stop for today. There are many more items left in my mailbag box, but uh, it's already too long. I hope it was interesting to watch. Let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of the items shown in this video. Same as always, links will be in the description below, so do check them out. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button which is free and helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.